some general housekeeping to attend to here. Uh, we have a purple PT Cruiser triple park to a Michael Bay route. It's out back. Uh, to uh, Hugh Weber, uh, you are needed back in South Dakota. Go home now. And uh, as of 11.30 a.m. Midwestern Standard Time, Don Trump's still the worst fucking human being in all the universe. I just, I just got the thing, so. If you voted for him, you're complicit. Okay, let's keep moving here. <laughs> Thanks for coming, everybody. Thank you for having me. Awesome. I want to be a sign painter now. I want to be a sign painter. Thank you. That was cool. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, bigger isn't better. Okay, uh, an update from the front lines of the Little Leagues of Graphic Design in no way, okay? Um, my name is Aaron James Draplin. I'm 43, 44 on Sunday, um, if I make it. Um, I'm a graphic designer, right? I live in Portland, Oregon. I come from a family with sisters and a mom and a dad and a nephew, and um, I have a better half named Lee McColai, and just there's a bright ray of light right here amongst all this show business. Look at her just... Look at that bright spot right there, just, okay. I make logos, right? I make logos, that's what I've done for a lot of years. And um, when you see this, remember, nine out of 10 of those were for my buddies. One of them were for um, the big leagues. One of these here, I got paid 25 grand. One of them, I got paid a burrito. <laughs> I've been saying that line for five years. I've kept myself busy with fun things field notes. You know, we made this because we couldn't find our own. All these posters from all the states of all these years I've been able to go travel and tell my story. I don't want to put my face on another thing. I mean, but to make this, maybe your mom and dad could dig that. That's the kind of stuff I'm way more interested in making. You've seen all the merch and you guys have been to the booth. Thank you so much for coming to all these booths, uh, these, all these years and, 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 and ravaging us. You've seen all this merch. This stuff was made to just you know, battle back taxes and stuff, and, and, and to give to my clients and to say thank you to people. Not a business, it's turned into that. All these places have been able to go and, <laughs> and talk, it's just weirder and weirder, you know. Today is number 331, I think is what it is. But in that book, when you see this, this is not stuff you'd ever know about. This is stuff from my buddies or my friend or something I donated to someone's cause or to a guy who's asking for help on Craigslist. That shit's in the book. But there's no money to be. You're not going to get asked to the conference for this stuff, you know, but that's in my book. And that's kind of what I want to show sort of today. Why? Because, man, I am trying to live my life creatively. I want to enjoy it along the way, the work. I want to provide for my mom and dad, my, you know, my mom and my sisters and Lee and, and, and my nephew, Dale, my buddy Dale. I want to be free. I want to be free. No more meetings about meetings and emails about me. I mean, no more pants. No more pants. <laughs> With no alarms. I got up this morning. I don't know who gets up at 7.30 anymore, but man, that is some rough shit. So I got up this day at 7.30. Professional. Yep. Yeah. How we do it. I draw in field notes, brand memo books. Okay, I draw. And this is the way it's always been. I make lists and I I think through things, and I, I'm a good listener with a client on the phone, and that's where I do it. It's just as simple as that. You know, I, there is no mystery here. I had a guy come after me, uh, something he saw in the book, because he said, you give out a lot of secrets in that book. Yeah. I want to demystify that every single person here can be a logo designer, a sign painter, an educator, an organizer, a conference person, a teacher, a mom, whatever. You can go do this stuff. Oh. I became, a, that's proof that I became a graphic designer. So when you see this stuff, you know, there's, there's some warts and moles in there, you know, uh, but it was on paper. To make something like this looks like this. You know, when you back out an illustrator, that's, <laughs> that's what it takes sometimes, you know? But what a privilege to have that kind of space to work with and that many variations and you dupe and drag and tune something and what an incredible, we forget that. As fast as we're going, we forget that we can go infinitely within those programs. I don't want to hear anyone complain about Adobe. <laughs> Next time you get your insurance quote, look over the, her shoulder, her, his shoulder, and look at the shit they're, they're doing your quote on. 
and then go play with your adobe. You'll never complain again, all right? I'm serious. I did. Because remember, you guys, vectors are free, right? And when you start that stuff and you go blasting through it like that, that's what you can, you know, kind of end out at this last little piece. So that's how I do it, right? I work. Dead things. I go, what do people do for fun? They go wine tasting. They put those little stupid things of beer on a little piece of wood. <laughs> fucking... Sorry. Well, I go junking all over America, dangerous places. Oh, look at all this. Look at these people. I hope, oh man, look at hanging around guys like this. Oh. So... You don't even make change when you walk up to that situation. You don't even make change. America, everybody. I'm out there fighting the good fight, rescuing this garbage, tuning up in Photoshop. You know, for you, for America. You could dip your, dip your $20 bill in that guy's wound. <laughs> so I've been junking for years. I know about the heroes. I saw Michael Beirut yesterday. I uh, got to meet uh, Geis Bueller. That was pretty cool. I, I, I saw the work from the saw basses and... Uh, Incredible. Uh, but I love this stuff. I love people who are just designers and working people who made things for, well, the Midwest, you know. And this is one day of junking on the world's longest yard sale. And the photos are free, you know. You're out there, and there's just so much randomness. We get, are getting caught in the sameness of this is cool and likes and clicks, and everything shits out at another Star Wars remix poster. Great, great. That's the best we can come up with. It's not that funny because there's a new, another movie coming in about three days. But I love the stuff that still works from 40 years ago, you know, that works on the side of a silo or on a big grain mill or something. And I've been, you know, challenging these things and playing with these things and cataloging these things for years. And there's nothing cool about this. But there, there was restraint. And the quality of one in color used a lot of ways. And that, sh that shit still works 40 years later. But let's get real clear. I do not want to go back to 1950 because fuck all that. My friends couldn't do the same shit I could do. America is getting better. Well, not since January 20th, but <laughs> I'm serious. But I don't want to go back. You know, grad students come after me. And they say, you challenge this. You champion, like, these old. No, I don't. I look at. How type is used in a circle. That was one of my skill shares. I look at thick lines. I look at how something reacts to wood, you know? But that's it. That's it. And just to play with these things, because I don't want to forget these. These are unmess withable properties, you know? And you're reminded of this stuff when you just go outside, you know, and actually look at things other than what's on your phone or some app. So go play with this stuff, because I try to use these things in my work. Now, listen, I don't want to be a movie set designer who just kind of apes this stuff to look like 1945. I mean, you can go see all the work out there. But I like the idea of when I make a logo, that logo works this big as much as it works in 50 feet today. That logo right there is the size of the top of a pencil. You remember what pencils are, right? They're like <laughs> erasers and wood. And, okay, okay. Things that helped other things become things, okay? If we're here to talk about craft and process and, and how we do what we do, I like, I like orange juice, fresh squeezed orange juice. And I saw this from my pile of stuff. It's a scratch and sniff from 1981 or something. I was like eight. And I found this in my stuff a summer ago and pulled it out. And it was like, man, why don't I have something that just celebrates orange juice? So I made a patch. <laughs> you got to, you know, because the first time I ever had fresh squeezed orange juice, it took eight oranges to make that little glass. I had never had that kind of, you know, luxury in my life. My dad explained to me, Aaron, eight to make that one glass. So, I mean, now when I destroy an odd walla, it is incredible. So I made a patch because why don't we have fun shit like this anymore, you know? And now it's going to become a hat, right? Right, you know? I don't need a DDC on the hat. It can be an orange juice hat. And I can't wait for someone to say, what is that from? And I'm going to say, I don't know. I just found it in a thrift store, you know? So <laughs> it's coming. Stars and stripes. What a shitty time in America. It, it moves me because I get messed with where I live in liberal bubble Portland, Oregon, because I have my favorite logo on my leg. But this logo doesn't mean dropping bombs on fucking developing countries. This logo me means that anyone can come here and maybe make it. Anyone can come here 
and raise a family. Fuck that wall. Fuck the, this whole new admi administration. I mean, where, if you show this now, you've got some good old boy thinking you're part of some Lee Greenwood bullshit. No. I want to celebrate America for what it gave for me, a, a scrubby kid from Michigan. You know, so how do you do that? Because the stuff I remember as a kid that you see in these thrift stores and overpriced antique malls, how do, you, how do we make that something new? Well, I just mocked up some stamps. Because wouldn't it be fun as a stamp? You know, that kind of shit. And I made these little mini prints and I made you know, some stars and bars. This is tricky stuff these days. But I put it out there because there's parts of America I'm proud of. I was proud of the last eight years with Mr. Mr. Obama and Michelle. You know, I was proud. But we don't have this stuff, so you make it and you put it out there, and I'm not allowed to talk about it, but there's some shit coming. I can't talk about it, but I saw some dead stuff and I made some new stuff, and I'm gonna keep moving. <laughs> when I can, I'm gonna talk about it, oh my God. But you guys ever heard of a dime novel? These are these things from like the Civil War, and they were a nickel or a dime, and they were just these, outlandish reports of the West or whatever, and sometimes horribly you know, insensitive and whatever, but they were like the first bits of fiction that you could get. Like they were, they were marketed to like teenage boys and stuff, right, in 1880 you know, or something. But there's just something about tall tales and this something in your hand that you actually still read and flip through. And we made this, we took this and made it into the new field notes called the Dime Novel Edition. And it allowed us to have you know, all these little embossings and things. But what I'm getting at is we saw one little thing, this great sort of American weird thing. You know, basically, they hit something. They sold a couple hundred thousand of these things. These guys got rich, Mr. Beetle or whatever. And then everyone else caught on to it. And that's when that thing exploded. And you see all these juicy things of Calamity Jane and you know, Buffalo Bill and all that shit. That's where this comes from. But for us, you know, it's like to take that thing that feels good in your hand, that's the craft. We just want to see like what can fit in your pocket and what, you know, that perfect bind or just all the funny shit we have on the back of these things, you know, we're just kind of going crazy because on the back of the beetle, you know, it would show you all the stuff that was coming. And often it was like lies and stuff. The thing said it was 100 pages. It was 70 pages, but it was up to 100. Who knows, right? <laughs> but to just go and see that that quick, it can be that quick when you're making these decisions and you're looking for stuff out there. And that's what this thing turned into, you know, and I didn't really know what these really were. I've seen, maybe seen them around, you know. Hardware, this, I, I made a typeface called DDC Hardware. This is out there, it's going, it's been going about six months, it comes from this. In Mississippi, what is that? And I took the picture and it's this delinting plant and you see this and you're like, well, I'm gonna go tonight in my hotel room and I'm gonna find this typeface in all my folders. I can find all that post, post, post modern riffraff from the 90s. Oh, there it is, you know, you know. You know, some font called Puke. I don't remember, but <laughs> I couldn't find this. So that night in my hotel room, I built this 10 years ago. And I don't know how to build a typeface. I'm not a typographer, and they'll tell you, and they do. And I documented all their <laughs> shitty comments. I did. <laughs> <laughs> so. For 10 years, I just, if I wanted hue, I'd grab H-U-G-H and take it out of Illustrator and track it out and print it and whatever and use it. But Riley Cran from Lost Type got his hands on this and helped me build a typeface and this thing's going. And it's going, and it, it's just that quick. You can see something, go de-invent it, reinvent it, retool it, and let it become this new thing. And this isn't meant to be cool. I want it to be at Home Depot where you can read it from five feet away, like when my grandpa went to Home Depot in 1942, I don't know. But we built that thing out to work for over 100 languages. Yeah, all over the world. That was Riley, very impressive guy. So check out DDC Hardware, but just keep your eyes open for these things. Oh, Bernie fell through our fingers, all that hair and teeth and shit, and I got to work for him. <laughs> I'll just show you the posters. There's Bernie Stars and Stripes, and there's Bernie WPA, and there's Bernie Thick Lines. <laughs> but we got to go see him at a big art show, and Shepard Fairey's work was on the wall, and all these, Jermaine Rogers, all these big names and shit. And we, me and my buddy Cody Hudson, we are at the bottom of the list, standing around looking at all these people 
being cool for cameras and shit. And we're just, what is this shit? And Bernie shows up. And there he is. And arms and elbows. And you can't, Secret Service people, you can't see nothing. And he comes in and you see just a little bit of Bernie right there. <laughs> and that's, that's when I start to cry. I start to cry because it's like, there he is. This is about a year ago. A year and a half ago. And I freak out because he's just from me to you. And then the ship parts, and Bernie comes up on the stage, and he does his top 1% deal and all this. But my, see this guy right here? This is my buddy Lewis Caldwin from Burlington, Vermont. He grew up with Bernie and Bernie's son. And he worked on the campaign doing art shows and mobilizing the youth kind of vote and stuff. That's my buddy Lewis. And here's Lewis. He gets Bernie up in the thing. That's Lewis looking at me saying, why are you crying? <laughs> but they got him out of there so quick. I got to meet Mr. Obama last summer, and I cried my eyes out. Lee's met him twice. Who here's met him? It's only three hands that go up anywhere I go. What a privilege to say. Well, my, what I said to him was I said, I'm going to miss you, man. That's what I told him. And uh, uh, that was cool. But I wanted to, selfishly wanted to shake Bernie's hand. They whisk him out of there. I have no proof I was even there. But I was digging around on the web, and I found this. <laughs> and that's right. That's right. There it is. That's right. Okay. okay. We got to make, I got to go quick. I'm in trouble. You guys invoice me. Invoice me. May 17th, that book came out and it's been going ape shit. Whoever bought one to, to yesterday or, or the last year and a half, thank you so much. It was on Abrams Books. I'm not supposed to be on a a big label or any of that shit. This is the guys that did Sagmeister's books. Come on, you know, and Victoria's book, you know. This is big time stuff to me. And I was scared to do it. But, you know, John Gall made it okay. And he said, let's do this thing. It's going to be fun. And you, you, get, you, you can write it. You can design it. And we'll do it. And we did. And I signed the contract, the whole deal. They were calling it a mid-career survey. Race, basically, in my life, it was 2000 to 2000, about 15, 15 years. You know, and I just want to pack in as much as possible. Every little, everything. Because that's the story. It's not the stuff that made me money. I mean, of course. But it's stacking up all the little stuff that got you somewhere or made someone feel good or made their band have a better record cover. That shit adds up, you know. And we did. So there's the book, and here's a couple spreads, of course. And, you know, give, it a, give it a shot. But one of our favorite sections... People draw me. I know I have a tricky face. The geometry is problematic, I know. But they draw me. What am I supposed to do when they hand me this stuff at events like this? What, what, I'm, that painting is like this big. Who puts a painting of themselves up in their shop and looks at it? Don Trump. But right now he's like in the shower, big golden comb over all the way down to the floor. Uh, they're needlepointing me right now. <laughs> these hand me these things, the eyes are all off, and I lost 40 pounds. And oh, I hug them and thank them. In my book, I collected all these all those years. I kept their names and their Instagrams and whatever the hell to get a hold of them. And there's two spreads in my book to every kid who drew me. Kids are getting jobs now because they're being seen in my book. That's cool. That's cool. There's even room for this. Yeah. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, boy, tough crowd, huh? Tough crowd, huh? All right. This last year alone on the book tour, me and Lee, we've done about 100 shows in that van, and we went everywhere to talk about our book. What a privilege. What an incredible year. If anyone came and saw a show, thank you so much. Um, Lee and I in that van, uh, tour van. You get a van, you're going to paint it, you know. And what are you, you going to say? It's your chance. My buddies come out of the woodwork, do the vinyl. I don't know, man. I don't want to be an advertisement, whatever. You know, I don't want it to get ripped off. You know, my buddies in bands. <laughs> but what are you supposed to say? You know, hard sell. <laughs> <laughs> Graphic design, right? <laughs> sell some posters. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> That's the van. And we went everywhere. And on Monday, we start the middle tour, where we go all the way to Vegas for Adobe. And then we go to Austin. 
and Wichita's and Omaha's and Sioux Falls and Minneapolis again and we do the middle because we've done all the other stuff. Incredible. That's what the van will look like when I roll it on I-94 I, I on my way down to it. But this is the main thing about that book that I'm so proud of. You, know, you could afford it. I fought for this. You know, I didn't want it to be 200 bucks or 100 bucks or any of that. It was 40 bucks, 16 cents a page, all right? You know, I, f I couldn't afford the shit when I was a kid. So that's my pre-order. Who got one pre-order? 24 bucks. That was cool. Thank you, you guys. Thank you. So there's the book. First night I got to see it at a Barnes & Noble on the, in the burbs of Portland. I walked in, and there it was, man, all the way at the bottom. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. Right down there by Design Basics Index. Yep, it's okay. <laughs> Stood there. <laughs> a couple tears. Lee's getting her coffee. A couple tears. I fucking grabbed my books, cleaned all that, you know, fucking designers for dummies and all that other you know, Austin Cleon bullshit out of the way and put my books up there and walked out. So <laughs> I, I ask you to do the same. Some numbers. First printing was gone in the first day. Second printing, we were already in the fifth printing of this thing, 14, you know, 15 months later. They said, maybe you'll sell 4,000. In my life, if a band sells 1,000 records, everyone from the band gets a couple grand. That's good, right? We're at 37,000. Now, if it sold 400 or 4,000 or whatever the hell it's going to sell, I was cool with all of it because I wasn't supposed to do it, you know, and it turned out and it was affordable and thank you to everyone who bought one. You know, I'm so, I'm so proud of that weird little thing. Um, so thank you. But that's happening. That happened. And right this very second, you guys, we are on the, this rock floating in space. And I just want you to remember that in every direction, depending on however you vote, science is a tricky thing. You can go this way infinitely forever. Until what? You get to the edge of the universe? It's either A or B, forever, or to the edge of the universe as she's creating herself, or whatever you want to call it. Does that freak anyone out? <laughs> yeah, freaks, that shit's real right now. Right now. The rest of your life before you were even born, it was real. I remind you to get cosmic when the clients are on your case, or you're in park traffic, or whatever the hell because that's real and that's beautiful and we're lucky to be alive and breathing and sharing and, and here today you know, with all this stuff. Some recent work and I'll get you out of here. Made a logo, another logo for the sun, you might as well go big. You know, just, no, no, no brief. My buddy's Finex company is still chugging along all these years later, I got to do all the branding and help him with that. Marin put me on his podcast, so weird. That's what it looks like when you make Mark Marin sign all the posters, he's all bent out of shape. That's what it looks like when he interviews you, so go check that out. Card series for my favorite band in Portland, Richmond Fontaine. That was, that was about a year ago. I got to do one of the first LGBTA cards for Target. Because shit's changing. And what side of history are you going to be on? And I got to help. Because you know, this is dedicated to my Uncle Terry and my Uncle John. Oh, their incredible Diana Ross record collection. You ought to see it. That shit's <laughs> mint. It's mint. It's got the, whole, oh, the extra version of the Oz. Uh, Matches I've been making. Everyone needs matches, right? Like, I don't need that to say DDC, but you just leave those around town. It's kind of cool. Like, why can't matches be cool, you know? We started this little mini, mini concept. It's a mini market concept in Portland that's going. I made big bone pencils, okay? <laughs> Very big. All the proceeds from these guys go to helping kids in Indianapolis in the city there. Inch by inch for, for Bob and Drew. That's cool. Dinosaur, I got my favorite band of growing up. I got to do a poster, and Hodgman saw it, and I did a poster for his tour. <laughs> and then I got to do his book cover about three months ago, and I got to illustrate him. I'm not an illustrator, you know. I got to draw him, and this is going to be hitting the, October 24th, his new book. So John's a buddy. Great, great guy. So hard to talk to on the phone. He is so smart. This is a logo for my friend's little cookware company in Burlington. Um, it's called, uh, what is it called? I'm so tired. <laughs> the Hungry Pea. And uh, sometimes it has a little green dot, but this is for my friend Maya. She's from Serbia. And 
I helped her with her logo, you know? I, there's no money. I don't really care. I, just, I like the idea that design can lift people who can't afford design. That's really fun to me and subversive in a kind of a fun way, you know? That Skillshare, the Skillshares are still going crazy. Third one's out. <sighs> December 1st, we kick off the fourth one, and then it comes out in January, but it's going to get weird in the fourth one, all right? New Thick Lines posters. I got to work for Jill Soloway in Transparent. Now, that's a badass lady. That was cool. That was cool. She doesn't take any shit. But I got to make When you see the end of Transparent now in that logo, we, we got to make it for Jill. Lee here has a little project. Don Trump railed the wrong cage, and her project's called Notes to Self. And she's making cards, and I like to say dangerous feminine products, but it might, might be the best way to put it. But <laughs> dangerous feminist items... Because this, this is what she's saying to herself. And she made these cards. That's my favorite one, of course. But <laughs> ladies and friends and just human beings, come see her stuff. She's been watching me you know, ball hog all these years. And she made her own stuff. And she's donated money to the ACLU. That's one person who can do this with this kind of stuff. It's cool. So check out her work and check out what she's doing with this. New field notes, Chris Stapleton hired me, and I got to do a logo that's on eight different semis or something this summer, like all over America. And then Isbell saw that, and I got to do a poster for him, and I got to do a, I went to the dark side, and I worked for Jerry Garcia Band, yes. And that's all right, that's all right. And the first three records, I love all that stuff. But, you know, I'm not going to make stuff about, you know, fighting Don Trump. I'm going to make things that I can just give away and say, use this stuff, and print it, and enjoy it, and, and just, just go for it. You know, more stuff like this and more things that just say tolerance or be nice to each other. I, I don't know. You know, I can't fight those guys. This just raised a, I don't know, a bunch of money for, for breast cancer. And if I can spend my life a couple days to help people, I'm going to do it. I saved it all. I've got my rent covered. But, you know, I just did that last week. Uh, high note closers. We'll get you out here. Work hard, you guys, and love this stuff. Lucky to be here. I could do this for a living. Slow down and do it on paper, you know. Start on paper. Um, we're forced and cajoled into apps and things, and I get it. But there's something magical about a pencil and a piece of paper, you know. And if you, if you freak out, I have a buddy who doesn't like a blank page. He just puts a big line, and then he feels better. I'm serious. Start on paper. There's magic to be had there still. Do good work for good people. Okay, you know, I mean, this, this exists, this exists. I have been lucky, 99 out of 100, I got to work for. We're good. And they were my buddies I would have been on a chairlift with or bought their record or bought their product, you know. That's a privilege. And I'm, I, I, that exists, that, that happened. Follow us, nothing about cats or coffee. I pledge, I pledge. <laughs> Come and get the book. Please don't make us lug that shit back in the plane, you know. That's a, <laughs> My back hurts, all right? Get some merch. We got a merch table. Thank you for having me. Thank you.